humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Chinstehova, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Pope John Paul II, pray for us. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Blessed Father George Popoluchko, pray for us. Blessed Mother Elizabeth Rose Chachka, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. During his journey to Golgotha, Jesus goes from hailed hero to crucified criminal. He surrenders out of obedience to his Father in love for us. As followers of Jesus, we too can face loss in sacrifice. Jesus knows what it means to sacrifice out of love. We journey together through loss, never alone but always united with Jesus. The second collection is, uh, in this Palm Sunday is designated for Holy Mass being celebrated for the eternal joy. Please join us in singing our first entrance hymn as our priests process to the back of the church at number 365. Hosanna to the Son of David, number 365. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is 
is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. We turn our attention to the entrance of the church, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his res resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches which your blessing, with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately upon entering it you will find a coat tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a coat tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered just as Jesus told them to do, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it and he sat on it. 
Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and let us listen to the word of God. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opened my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore I am therefore I am disgraced. I have set my face, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. They wag their heads. 
He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God. Divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God. Proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere Descendants of Israel, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him 
and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. We will read the Passion of Jesus according to Saint Mark and those parts marked with double S we will read together. You can find it in our Panzwami Mesalets on page 149, 149. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery to put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came in with alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfume oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages in the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her, Jesus said. Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the third day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared for the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I, he said to them. One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, 
and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be shaken. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawn again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let's go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body, they seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the gods, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garment and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, 
and the guards greeted him with blows, while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maid came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the other outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. Are you the king of the Jews? As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas and to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldier led him away inside the place, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple and weaving a crown of thorns placed it on him. They began to salute him with and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage and when they had mocked him they stripped him of his purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Syrian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is in translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him, divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by revealed him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests, the scribes, mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, and let the Christ be in Israel. Come down now, and let us Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him, 
At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last breath. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from the top to the bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Hoses and Salomon. These women had followed him and when he was in Galilee and administered to them. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he had learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jose watched where it was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. Let us take some rest. I would like to share this short reflection. Throughout Jesus' life, he traveled to Jerusalem many times. However, the trip to Jerusalem that we commemorate today was unlike any other. As Jesus entered Jerusalem this time, his life was already being sought by the religious leaders. Despite that, Jesus entered Jerusalem with much attention. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That was the cry by the crowd as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey while palm branches and cloaks were spread before him. Though this was the most fitting way for the people of faith to welcome their king. They warm welcome, they cries Hosanna, and their excitement were more beneficial to them than they were to Jesus. Jesus is God. He has no need of our praise and honor, but Jesus came to us to invite us to praise, honor, and worship him because it is good for us. We need to praise him. This is what we are made for. This leads to the fulfillment of our lives. As we begin Holy Week, try to spend time with this image of the people 
honoring our Lord with much enthusiasm. This is an image telling us who we must become. As we continue through this Holy Week, we must become increasingly aware of God to whom we offer our praise and worship. He is God who lowered himself in the eyes of all, took on the form of a slave, permitted himself to be labeled as a grave sinner, was rejected, beaten, and killed. This week especially, we worship the suffering Christ. We worship a man who was arrested and treated as criminal. We worship a man who was hated and mistreated in the worst way possible. In many ways, it is easier to worship God as he is in heaven, on his glorious throne. When we ponder the angels gather around him, the saints, his glory, worship seems okay, seems right. To worship a man accused of being a criminal and suffering capital punishment while enduring the hatred of many is more difficult to comprehend. But if we are able to see Jesus through the eyes of faith and look through the hatred and lies that surrounded him, when we will, then we will be in awe for the humility of our God who came to us this way. Our worship of the suffering Christ also invites us to share in his virtue as he endured all that was inflicted upon him. When, he, when we worship the humiliated Christ, our own humiliations take on a new power and meaning. When we worship the suffering Christ, our own sufferings are elevated to share in his redemption. When we worship the rejected, despised, and persecuted Christ, anyways, that we share in these hardships are transformed. God descended to us in this most humble form so that he could meet us where we are at and raise us to new life with him. <clears throat> My suffering Lord, I worship you and praise you with all my heart. May I always worship you who suffered for me and give to you all that I have endured in life to be transformed by your saving act. Jesus, I trust in you. Let us now profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. <clears throat> Together we share our needs with the Lord, who humbled himself to be one with us. We pray for that we will receive unity and peace in our church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the enlightenment with the light of the faith, those who seek you, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that you make young people a sign of hope for the modern world so that they are not afraid to acknowledge Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of health to the sick and comfort to all those who are afflicted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the repose of the soul of Andrew Bolinsky, whose funeral mass was yesterday, for our beloved ones who have died into this kingdom. At this mass, we remember. Vernon and Bruce Parent, Marian Shedrick, Camilla and Wilfred Ashi, Marek Matsko, Jan and Sabina Domashevich, Michael Morrissey, Józefa Stefan Józef and Stefania Hojnowski. Let us pray to the Lord. We ask that you surround with protection our friends and those who have commended in this Eucharist, Elizabeth Daly, Thaddeus, and certain family members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that you stand by the both, we pray that you stand by both in moments of our triumphs and moments of our failures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear these prayers and petitions that we bring before you with humble hearts and answer them in accordance with your holy will. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sancto. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when on that same evening he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. So 
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his displeasure of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, his spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass in us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by this, these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us the, to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday, next Saturday we will celebrate Easter Vigil at 7.30 p.m. The whole program for a schedule for our Holy Week can be found in our bulletin, on our website, and, and everywhere else. But so please take the bulletin home and please join us for the celebrations of the Holy Week. This coming Tuesday is our day of uh, penance. Uh, priest will be here to hear confessions beginning at 6.30 p.m. At 6, there will be a talk in Polish because tomorrow we begin our Lenten mission in Polish. Again, the schedule for this, for the mission, is also in our bulletin and on our website. As you will leave, uh, you may get uh, the, the babka. It's not like the uh, old babka we, we used to have. It's small babka for your Easter basket, uh, for your Easter food blessing. So if you would like to support Metanoia Group uh, in their evangelization efforts, that would be the best, the, one of the ways to support these efforts to, by buying this very delicious Easter babka. Before we go, let us say a prayer for peace in the world through the intercession of St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell is Satan and all the evil spirits, <coughs> seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Please join us in singing our recessional hymn found at number 349. Behold before our wondering eyes, number 349. Behold before our wandering eyes, beyond the gates of paradise, shines out the tree of life adored, the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. Behold, behold the glorious wood, upon which hung our only good. It bore him up in offering, the Lamb whose praise the angels sing. Behold, against the wall of night, the doorway to eternal light, Stands open now the narrow way, invites us into endless day. All glory be to him who died, all honor to the crucified, who lives and reigns eternally. With Father, Spirit, one in three. 